Hi, in this question we've got Stan and Christine who are playing a zero sum game and the game is represented by this payoff matrix for Stan. So that means that this three um, here represents a gain of three for Stan um, and obviously because it's a zero sum game it represents a loss of three for Christine. Okay, part A says find the play safe strategy for each player. Okay, so to find the play safe strategy, uh, what we want to do is for each um, of these outcomes for Stan, if you play strategy A, we're looking for the worst possible outcome for him. So along here, um, the worst possible outcome would be if Christine played E. So if, if, if Stan went for strategy A and um, Christine went for strategy E, that would give Stan a loss of three. So that's his worst case st scenario for playing strategy A. So I'm going to put a negative 3 here. Worst case scenario. For B, his worst case scenario would be a negative 4. And for C, his worst case scenario would be negative 3. Okay, so um, what we're looking for is the best of his worst case scenarios. So the best of his worst case scenarios is going to be a negative 3 and that happens if he plays, plays A or C. So for part A over here we're looking for um, for Stan his, pl his play safe strategy, I'll write it over here, for Stan it's going to be his maximum of the row minimums okay so these are his row minimums negative 3 was a minimum value negative 4 was a minimum value negative 3 was a minimum value and he wants the maximum of those which is going to be negative 3 um, so his play safe is going to be A or C, either A or C. Now we want to do a similar thing for Christine, however we need to bear in mind that it's going to be the opposite way, way around for Christine. So we, instead of finding the minimum of each row, we want to find the maximum of each row. Okay, so the maximum for this one is 3, because that's going to be the worst case scenario for Christine, if she plays strategy D, her worst case scenario is going to be this 3 here because that means a loss of 3 for Christine. That's the opposite way around. It's a gain of 3 for Stan, but a loss of 3 for Christine. So that's why we're looking for the maximum. The maximum here is going to be 0. That would be the gain of 3, a gain of 4, and that would be a gain of nothing. Okay, so that's the worst case scenario. Over here, we want the maximum again, that's going to be a loss of 2. And over here, the worst case scenario is going to be this loss of 3. Okay, so where we were finding the maximum of the row minimum, um, we're now looking for the best of the worst case scenarios. So that would be a loss of 3, a loss of nothing, a loss of 2, and a loss of 3. A loss of nothing would be the best of the worst case scenarios. So that's going to be the minimum of the column max um, and the minimum of the column maximum is going to be zero that's going to be the best of the worst case scenarios so that's going to give me a play safe strategy and that's going to be strategy E that gives me that so for Christine the play safe is going to be E. Strategy E. Okay, now part B says show that there is no stable solution. Okay, so in order for there be to be a stable solution, our maximum row min would have to be equal to, to our minimum column max. Okay, and because our maximum row min, I'll write that down, row min is not equal to our minimum column
column max or in other words negative 3 is not equal to 0 um, that tells me that there is no stable solution okay right so that's part A and part B I'm going to swap colors here and we'll do part C so part C says um, explain why um, a suitable payoff matrix for Christine is going to be given by this here okay so um, well let's let's have a look because this is now a three sorry a two by three whereas this was originally a three by four okay so um, and this is a suitable payoff matrix for Christine rather than Stan so I'm first going to have a look in, um, at our columns here and you might notice that if we compare column E to column D um, this would be a gain of 3 versus a loss of 3 this would be a gain of 4 versus a gain of 1 and this would be a gain of nothing versus a loss of 1 and E is always going to be a better strategy for Christine to choose rather than D that's better than that that's better than that and that's better than that so um, what we say is that E dominates D so our first thing that we're going to say is that E dominates D okay so what we can do is we can actually um, we can get rid of column D because we don't actually need column D anymore because E is always going to be a better option for Christine to pick rather than D okay um, and again if we now compare um, some of these together you might notice that um, F um, if we compare that to G well F would give a gain of 1 whereas G would give a gain of nothing F would give a loss of 2 over here but a loss of 3 over here and F would give a gain of 3 over here and only a gain of 2 over here so in each of these scenarios F is always going to be a better option to choose rather than G okay so what we can say is that F dominates G in every scenario Christine is better off playing strategy F um, than strategy G so in fact G is a useless strategy I would never choose to, to play G I would always choose to play F ahead of G okay so now this has changed this um, uh, array into just two columns and three rows now because we're saying that this is a payoff matrix for Christine um, I would now need to convert this by multiplying each of these numbers by negative 1 so I'm going to multiply each cell by negative one and that would make that three four zero one two three three four zero one sorry three four zero one negative two three so three four zero one negative two three um, and I also would need to transpose it as well okay so I've decided that E dominates D so we've got rid of D um, F dominates G so we've got rid of G we then multiplied each of these by negative 1 to change it into a payoff matrix for Christine and we transposed it as well okay so now this would be a suitable payoff matrix for Christine I hope that made sense uh, thanks very much for joining me I'll see you next time